Hello students, welcome to the lecture number 58. In today's lecture, we are starting a new chapter that is scope on non-concurrent forces. You must remember that in phase 1, we have studied about the first chapter that is scope on concurrent forces, very first chapter of our phase 1. Right after that, this is the non-concurrent forces. What is the meaning of non-concurrent forces? They are co -planar. Means they are acting on a single plane, on a single plane only. But the line of action of the forces are different, not parallel to each other or maybe parallel to each other. But they are not intersecting at the same point. So, this type of forces are known as coplanar non-concurrent forces. You can see, as the weight is hanging on the crane or weight the hanging weight is hanging on the material handling equipments which is at a some distance from the line of action of the body of the machine while the line of action of the force is parallel to that of the machine in the previous chapter means in the previous chapter means in the coplanar concurrent forces we have been discussing the effect of forces acting on a body through their line of action or at the point of their intersection but in this chapter we shall discuss the effect of these forces at some other point away from the point of intersection of their lines of action. Now, as you can see in the figure, what happens due to this weight? You can see what happens due to this weight. This weight is creating a movement, clockwise movement towards the line of action of the body. Suppose this is the vertical line of action of the body. Imagine this. Then about this axis, the weight is creating a movement like this. So this weight is creating a movement in the clockwise direction. So movement is equal to force into perpendicular distance which will be this one. As you have studied about the movements. Let us see ahead what actually happens. What is movement of a force? You just understand that. What is movement of a force? Movement of a force is the turning effect produced by a force on the body on which it acts. The movement of a force is equal to the product of force and the perpendicular distance of the point about which the movement is required and the line of action of the force. So it is the product of force and perpendicular distance about certain point. Mathematically, what is movement? Movement is equal to P into L where P is equal to force acting on the body and L is equal to perpendicular distance between the point about which the movement is required and the line of action of the force. So remember this formula carefully m is equal to p m to l. We will discuss certain types of movements and then after we'll do one numerical also to find the movement of a particular force. Then after this chapter will run like butter. Let us see ahead what is given unit of movement. What is the unit of the movement? Let us check. Since the movement of a force is the product of the force and distance. Okay, it is the product of force and distance. Therefore, the units of the movements will depend upon the units of force and distance. Thus, if the force is in Newton and the distance is in meters, then the unit of movement will be Newton into meter. It is symbolically written as Newton into meter. Similarly, the units of movement may be the bigger one means kilonewton into meter. Okay. Or smaller unit is Newton into mm, well the distance is taken in mm only. So hence the units are changing from Newton into mm, kilonewton into meter, kilonewton into mm, Newton into mm, anything. Depending on the unit of the force and the unit of the distance. There are two types of movements. First one is clockwise movements and second one is anti-clockwise movements. Let us discuss about both this type of movements. What is clockwise movements first? You can see from the definition, it is the movement of a force whose effect is to turn or rotate the body about the point in the same direction in which hands of the clock move as shown in the figure. You may see the minute hand, hour hand, second hand of the clock. In which direction it is moving? It is moving from clockwise to anti-clockwise or from anti-clockwise to clockwise. You can imagine that. You just see about this figure. Here it is the point o about which we want to take the movement. Okay. So it means what? How many forces? There are three forces. First force, 
second force and the third force three forces acting on a horizontal beam suppose and we want to take the moment about point o so you have to rotate all these three forces about point o in the direction of the force just imagine what type of rotation will be there then this first force is going down you can see so it is rotating like this about point o so it is rotating in clockwise direction okay so it creates clockwise moment which having the value of force into perpendicular distance between point o and this force okay now what happens with this force second force it is going up first so rotate it about point o like this so it is also going in the clockwise direction so it is also giving clockwise moment third force it is also going upward so rotating about point o it will go like this so it is also clockwise moment so all these three forces are creating clockwise moments about point o the value of the moment can be found out with the help of the formula force into perpendicular distance so this is basically the phenomena of clockwise moment what happens with the anti clockwise moment anti clockwise moment will be exactly a reverse to this see what is anti clockwise moment you can see it is the moment of a force whose effect is to turn or rotate the body about the point in the opposite direction in which the hands of the clock moves as shown in the figure clocks are moving hands of the clocks are moving in the clockwise direction but in the opposite direction is known as anti clockwise direction you can see in this figure this is the point o again there are three forces see the first force is going upward so rotate it about point o like this so it is going in anti clockwise direction this is the anti clockwise direction second force going upwards so it is rotating in, again in the anti clockwise direction about point o this third force is also going down so rotating it about point o it will also create anti clockwise moment like this so all these three forces are giving anti clockwise moment about point o so this type of moments are known as anti clockwise moment so this is the fundamental of clockwise and anti clockwise moment so you must remember that what you have to remember you just rotate any of the force about given point in the direction of the force then you will find that if it is clockwise or if it is anti clockwise and then after you have to multiply the perpendicular distance from that point to the line of action of the force then you will get the moment in kilonewton into meter or newton into meter or newton into mm also okay let us start something based on that before that this is the particular and very very important theorem varignan's principle of moments also known as law of moments varignan is a, a scientist which 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 has given the principle of moments so what is the principle of moments basically it states if a number of coplanar forces number of coplanar forces means more than two forces are acting simultaneously on a particle they are acting on a particle then the algebraic sum of moments algebraic sum of moments means sigma moments of all the forces about any point about any one point say o so sigma m about o is equal to the moment of the resultant force about the same point so is equal to sigma moment about point o is equal to moment of resultant r about o means same point so this is the varignan's principle you cannot get this theorem very easily when we are doing the numerical then and then you will getting this statement of varignan's principle so as of now you just remember this statement of varignan's principle or it is also known as law of moments we will apply this principle in the numerical afterwards this is very important numerical very important theorem so must remember this let us see one example and then after we will conclude our today's lecture you must study and you must revise this lecture then and then you will get my next video lecture of moments and resultant of moments let us see in this example what is given to you in the example number 3.1 a force of 15 newton is applied perpendicular to the edge of the door 0.8 meter wide as shown in the figure a you can see this is the figure a suppose point o point o is the hinge point or it is the fixed point about which the door is rotating so this is the surface of the door you can see and a point a is the edge of the door at the edge of the door 15 newton force is acting 
which is perpendicular to the surface of the door you can see the door is 0.8 meter long in the second case the same hinge o is there the door is 0.8 meter long at the edge of the door means at point b the force 15 newton is acting but now at this time the 15 newton 15 newton force is not perpendicular to the surface of the door but it is inclined inclined at 60 degree to the surface of the door means x axis as you can see in the figure so what we have to do we have to find the moments of the force about hinge means we have to find the moment about point o in both the cases if this force is applied at an angle of 60 degree to the edge of the same door then also find the moment of this force so in both the cases we just have to find the moments so you can see from the figure that the 15 newton load is vertically going down so while rotating about point o it will give the clockwise movement like this okay so about 0.8 meter distance it will give the clockwise movement so force p is equal to 15 newton length of the door is 0.8 meter and we know the, that the moment of the force about the hinge is equal to p into l so what is p into l p means force l means distance so force is equal to 15 newton and the distance is 0.8 meter so 15 into 0.8 will give you answer of 12 newton into meter as the force is in newton and the distance is in meter so moment will be 12 newton into meter this is for the first case now as you can see in the second figure this 15 newton force is acting at an angle of 60 degree with the x axis so first of all you have to make two vertical and horizontal components of this inclined force vertical component will be 15 sin 60 as you must know about this and the horizontal component is going left which is 15 cos 16 like this let us see ahead this is the components of the vertical force 15 sin 60 vertical and 15 cos 60 horizontal blue one is the horizontal component the pink one or red one is the vertical component 15 newton is our inclined force at an angle of 60 degree now what happens this 15 cos 60 while extending this horizontal force it is just passing from the hinge point so there is no perpendicular distance between this horizontal component and the hinge so movement of this horizontal component is zero in other words when the line of action of the force remember this when the line of action of the force is passing from the point then movement of this force about the point is zero so what is the remaining force 15 sin 16 its line of action is vertical it is not passing from the point o so there will be some movement this force is going down so it will again rotate in the clockwise direction so it will be like this 15 sin 60 what is 15 sin 60 or you can multiply like this sin 60 into 0.8 sin 60 is it means 0.866 and 0.8 will be 0.693 okay so it will give the movement like this 15.693 10.4 newton into meter if you are confusing like this then you just remember this 15 sin 60 is the vertical component which is 13 newton and 13 into 0.8 is equal to 10.4 newton meter this is the first method or this is the second method but the second method is very easy for you again repeating what happens 15 sin 60 is the vertical component and 0.8 meter is the horizontal distance of it so answer will be 10.4 newton into meter see students this is a very tough chapter to find the movements elsewhere okay clockwise anti-clockwise this point that point vertical force horizontal force upward force downward force so you just practice this numerical you just practice this theories which i have discussed earlier and then and then we will start the next lecture which will be very important for you and in the next lecture we will conclude this chapter also we will extend that lecture and complete this like complete this chapter on tomorrow thank you very much students